Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a countdown of my top 10 ways to make gold in Legion. With patch 7.1.5 on the horizon, making gold is more important than ever. Battle.net balance is being added to the WoW token, which means you'll be able to use your WoW gold to buy more things than ever before. You could fill out your collections with shop pets and mounts. You could stock up on Hearthstone card packs, you could fuel your Overwatch loot addiction, hell, you could even buy Overwatch. All this cool stuff means the price of the WoW token is skyrocketing, so even if you just want to pay your sub fee, you'll need to keep on top of your gold pile. On top of all that, if you raid or do Mythic Plus, you know how expensive it is to stay stocked up on flasks, pots, and runes. So how do you generate nerd cash in Legion? Number 10. World Quests with a Properly Geared Combat Ally World Quests are a staple of Legion. Some people clear the whole map, others stick to their emissary. Some people hunt down artifact power quests, and others do the battle pet ones religiously. Whatever kind of world quester you are, you're probably missing out on some extra gold. Assign an epic quality follower as a combat ally, and then equip them with a potion of triton and a necklace of endless memories. Together, that's a bonus 75 gold on top of the world quest reward for every one that you do. Fish up 10 lively storm rays, that's 75 gold. Kick a bunch of acorns, 75 gold. Beat up the hungry ice fang, 75 gold. Even if you do only your emissary, that's an extra 2100 gold a week for doing nothing extra. The Potion of Triton and Necklace of Endless Memories can be found wherever you get your champion equipment. If you're really lucky, you might find a Dust of Azeroth and be able to slot that right next to your Potion of Triton. Putting in work orders for crates of champion equipment is probably the fastest way to dig for this stuff. On top of that, there's of course world quests with gold rewards on their own. Add-ons like World Quest Tracker help you see how much gold is out there on your map and where to find it. If you're strapped for funds, pimping out a combat ally and bringing him on a gold quest tour is a great place to start. Number 9. Legacy Pet Dailies So what I mean by this is doing a daily sweep of the Pandaren Spirit Tamers and or the Tiny Terrors of Tanan. Now, this is only worth considering if you have flight training for the respective continent and a good supply of battle pets. You can quickly get to Pandaria through the Veil of Eternal Blossoms portal in Legion's Dalaran. There are four Pandaren Spirit Tamers, and they each have a chance to drop their mini look-alike pet. The Pandaren Earth Spirit, Water Spirit, Fire Spirit, and Air Spirit pets average in price between 3 and 10k each. The Tamers are kind of spread out, but if you're already doing a loop of the Pandaren Master Tamers to level your pets, it's a nice bonus. They can all be beat with carry strats, meaning you can level pets to raise their sell value while you're at it. On Draenor, you can find the tiny Terrors of Tanan spread out through Tanan Jungle. If you have Drainer flying, it's pretty quick to loop through these. The fell-touched pet supplies you get have a chance to drop the Nightmare Bell, Zangar Spore, Seaborn Spore, and Periwinkle Calf pets. These pets tend to go for between 10 and 30k gold each. While you're doing the rounds, you'll stock up on a whole whack of pet supplies such as bandages and level stones. Farming these pets isn't the most time-efficient way of grinding gold, but when they do drop, it's a raw profit. Number 8. Disenchanting. You get gear upgrades once in a blue moon. Non-upgrades, however, pretty much fall out of the sky. You get gear from your world quests and emissary caches, battlegrounds, skirmishes in arena, random heroics, your mythic plus runs, bonus rolls, and the list goes on. What do we do with all that gear? For most of us, we, uh, we vendor it. But what if there was a better way? If I vendored this Woe Bearers band, I'd get about 35 gold. But if I disenchant it for a Chaos Crystal, boom, 350 gold! Prices will of course vary per server, but on average that's over a 900% increase. If I only see 3 epics per day, which with world quests is really easy, I'm netting a bonus 30k gold every month. Or I would be if I didn't keep donating stuff to my guild bank. The moral of the story is that if you aren't using a profession, disenchanting has profit potential with zero time investment. Number 7. Gathering Professions Ever since they introduced queuing for stuff, WoW has been a game with downtime. You could spend it running laps around Dalaran, or idle in your order hall while browsing cat pictures on your phone. Or, what if you used your downtime to print some gold? With Gathering Professions, that dream is super real. Herbalism is generally the most profitable, followed by mining and then skinning. If you have double crafting professions and you're really attached to them, fishing is always there for you too. Picking up herbs that you see while running around doing world quests is one of the easiest things you can do to make a lot of gold over time. On most servers, herbs like Foxflower and Fjorn Skuggle go for an average of 30 gold each. If you proc a little fox dude and pick up 20 Foxflower, that's a free 600 gold just sitting on the ground. For fish, I find High Mountain Salmon, Runescale Koi, and Cursed Queenfish to have the best value with at least 10 gold per fish. 
Whether you're waiting for a tank for Mythic Plus or your Battleground queue to pop, sitting around fishing generates free gold and time that you weren't really using anyways. Fishing in the Broken Isles can catch up your skill really quickly too, so it's okay if your fishing skill isn't maxed. Number 6. Farming Mog and Pets This is the quintessential Sunday afternoon for me. You pick a nice spot, take a trip down memory lane, and pick up some nice stacks of gold while you're at it. The new transmog collection system means that more people than ever before are looking for mog. Using Tradeskillmaster, you can see the market value of each piece on its tooltip. I like running old raids because I can sell the BOE greens, and you get battle pet drops as icing on the money cake. Consider running normal mode ICC in particular because the normal Lich King can drop the Drudge Ghoul, which goes for fantastically high prices. You don't have to stick with raids either. Going back through your favorite vanilla dungeons is usually lucrative for transmog, because vanilla greens were a lot more varied and rare. Get a hit of nostalgia and an infusion of gold. You'll build your own transmog library through looting soulbound epics, while building an inventory of BOE mog to sell. People will surprise you with what they buy, so I strongly recommend using Master to check average market price before you declare something ugly and chuck it. Number 5. Crafting Consumables the advent of Mythic Plus in particular has created an even greater demand for flasks, potions, and food than we've seen in the past. People burn through this stuff like booze at a holiday party, so the prices stay pretty high. Alchemy is probably the most reliable crafting profession to make gold with, while cooking is great because it doesn't require a primary profession slot. Nomi is still pretty bad at his life, but he's more generous than he used to be at giving out recipes if you don't have them all yet. Make sure that when you're researching recipes with Nomi that you give him the cheapest math that can reward the recipe you're looking for. Once you've got some options, you can use TSM Crafting to identify which recipes you can craft for profit, and which mats you're better off selling uncooked. Augment runes can't be crafted, but if your class happens to have tanking or healing capabilities, the Incentive Program add-on will alert you as to when you can queue for a Call to Arms Satchel. The bags have Augment runes you can use or sell on top of a big chunk of raw gold. Number 4. Blood of Sargeras Trading If you have bloods, only a Bloodthorn has goods. Bloods come from everywhere, so if you aren't using them for crafting, don't be shy about cashing in. Foxflower and Starlight Rose tend to be good investments. Again, I like to use TSM to see market price in tooltips. It's the fastest way to quickly identify which things you should trade your extra bloods for. I know it's tempting to hoard them, but they're no good to you if you sit on them forever. Number 3. Class Order Hall Missions It's not quite as yummy as the Draenor Garrison missions were, but it's still quite a bit better than nothing. The key is to max out your bonus chance so that you get that big, juicy extra chunk of change. Having alts leveled up will multiply your income from gold missions, although you do need a bit of order resources to keep this rolling. You can send out and complete missions right from your phone, so no excuses. You don't even need to turn on your computer. Having higher item level followers will cause higher gold reward missions to spawn, so if you're only seeing 1 to 300 gold reward missions, just keep gearing up your followers. An 1100 gold mission with a strong bonus chance is not too shabby for what's basically free gold. Number 2. Shoulder Boons There are 7 different types of boons you can enchant your shoulders with in Legion. Each one lets you pick up packs of goods when you kill mobs in the Broken Isles. You could get extra gems, fish and herbs, meat and leather, enchanting mats and pots, or in armor, bloods, or cloth. Check your auction house to see what type of goods sell best, but 9 times out of 10 you want the boon of the Harvester for extra fish and herbs. You can buy this from the Dreamweaver's Quartermaster at Lorlothil as early as Honored Reputation. This is more free gold for doing things that you already do, so there's no reason to be rocking around boonless. Finally, number 1. Auction House Flipping This can be as big or small as you want, but the key is to buy low, sell high. The sky's the limit here. Check out my Trade Skill Master guides to get set up for playing the Auction House properly. Start small until you have a good feel for your server's market and what things tend to sell for. Websites like the Undermine Journal will show price histories, which is super handy when you're getting started. I like flipping in fun markets like battle pets and mounts, but you can also easily earn gold flipping underpriced mats, transmog pieces, BOE gear, and crafted goods. It takes a little setting up and it's not risk-free, but this is how those people with all the gold made their fortunes. Just sitting at the auction house, you can make flips earning you thousands and thousands of gold every day. Playing the auction house is surprisingly addictive and can turn into a bit of a lifestyle, so remember to stretch your legs and see your friends once in a while. So, those are my top 10 ways of making gold in Legion. No matter how you play WoW, there's bound to be a few that fit into your routine. Whether you're saving for a spider, buying game time for your guildies, or addicted to Overwatch loot boxes, this should help you stay on top of all of your gold making needs. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!